So now that you have built a good performance test database that accurately replicates your production database, let's discuss how you can use this database to make your development process more effective. First of all, when you're developing your application, you're going to have SQL statements that you want to get an idea of their performance and how Oracle is processing the statement. So this is the first use of your performance test database. You will want to take these statements and then generate execution plans and actually execute the statements in this full-size database to get a performance baseline. How to do this is covered in detail later in the course in two modules, the first being named Statement Level Performance Tuning and the second being Execution Plans in Depth. So what you'll want to do is to apply the techniques discussed in those two modules to better understand how these statements are going to perform. If you run a statement in your performance test database and the statement has a high cost or is doing a lot of I.O., then you're probably going to want to engage in some performance tuning. This could involve rewriting parts of the statement or modifying some of the indexes or perhaps even redesigning how your application is going to perform a task. And so this is the second use of this performance test database is so that you can engage in this type of performance tuning while you're still in development. It is in this sense that performance tuning is a highly iterative process. You're going to run your SQL statement and get some baseline performance values. This would include the statement cost, the baseline number of logical reads, and an estimate of the amount of time it takes to run that SQL statement. And then you're going to engage in some performance tuning, let's say for example adding an index. And then we're going to execute our statement again and measure the impact of the change that we made. This allows us to judge how effective our change was and if there's more that we should do or if this change is good enough. And then you keep iterating in this fashion. Sometimes a change that you'll make will have no impact. You may add an index, but for some reason Oracle doesn't use the index. So then you head back to the drawing board, reanalyze your statement, and maybe come up with a different index that you can use. Now if all this seems a little bit overwhelming, don't worry. That's what the rest of this course is about. And in fact, we'll go over in detail what makes a good index, what makes a bad index, and why Oracle will or won't use an index. In addition to tuning individual SQL statements, you will also want to conduct component level and application level performance testing. And of course you want to do this against your test database that reflects what your production data looks like. This serves several purposes. First, it should validate any statement level tuning that you did, and second, it exercises the entire component, so if there are other pieces of data access code that were not tuned at a statement level, you'll get an idea of how that code is performing. Finally, you'll get to see the entire component working together, and this might indicate that you need some more performance tuning. It may be that you are comfortable with the performance of each statement individually, but after seeing a component that needs to run four or five of these statements together, the overall performance is less than what you need. What we are trying to do is to identify any performance issues that we might have early in our application development life cycle, so that if we need to make any changes, we allow for sufficient time in our schedule to make these changes, and we avoid having to rework major components of our application at the last minute. So as you work through designing and developing your application, recognize places where you have complex SQL statements, statements that run against tables with large numbers of rows, search type functions, or areas that have had past performance problems. And then prioritize these statements and components to be analyzed and tested early in your project lifecycle so you can identify and address any issues that may come up. In an ideal setting, once you've finished with coding your application and it moves into a test phase, you would have an opportunity to conduct formal performance testing. Typically what this involves is some software that will distribute agents across different client machines and each of these agents simulate a certain number of users or transactions running against your application. Many organizations have specialized teams that are responsible just for helping you conduct this type of performance testing. Performing a formal performance test can provide you with very detailed insight into how your application will behave before it's deployed to production. By working with your DBA and using the information in the module on monitoring Oracle applications, you can get a good feel for what areas of your application are performing well and what areas still need some tuning to occur. 
And this, of course, is very valuable. When we can identify and fix these issues in a full-size performance test environment, rather than finding them after we deploy to production. Even if you are not conducting formal performance testing, it can still be very valuable to conduct at least some, if not all, of your functional testing for your application against a full-size database that reflects your production data. As your QA staff or business users test the application, they're going to get some feedback about how different functions perform. While it is true that the app isn't being tested at full load, it is still better to have some feedback about the performance rather than none. And again, you can identify some areas of high risk in terms of performance and make sure that your testers hit these areas. First, you'll get some direct feedback from them if a function that they were testing didn't meet their expectations in terms of performance. For example, they may tell you directly that a certain function took 20 seconds to complete and that was too slow. But second, you can use some of the techniques presented in the Monitoring Oracle Applications module to look into Oracle itself and see if any statements your application is running are using up an excessive amount of resources. These statements may perform okay in tests because you don't have very many users and the database isn't under much of a load. But when you move to production, these statements will be a problem. While this is not as thorough or as detailed as conducting a full performance test, you will still get some insights into how different functions in your application perform, and it will hopefully help you identify any of the more significant performance issues that you might have. So far, everything we have talked about in terms of performance tuning and testing has been with regards to proactive performance tuning. Unfortunately though, no matter how thorough our testing, there are times when performance issues occur in a running production application, and you're going to need to troubleshoot these problems and fix them. This is what we would call reactive performance tuning. Obviously, we would like to avoid these situations as much as possible, but it does happen. Sometimes these are urgent issues where you have a function in your application that is essentially unusable because it runs so slow, and sometimes it is more of a chronic situation where a function has been getting slower and slower over time and users are starting to complain. In either case, we're going to have to engage in some performance tuning. So these types of situations provide one more use for your full-size performance test database. Once you identify the suspect SQL statement or function, you can tune and test any fixes you have in your test database rather than in production. In order to fix the issue, you may need to try out several different ideas, and it is always preferable to do this in a test environment rather than a production environment. This is especially important because if you have to do something like build a new index or maybe drop and recreate an index with new columns on a very large table, this can take a significant amount of time and system resources. So we'd like to only do this once in production as to minimize the impact on end users of our application. In summary, we want to make sure that we have a full-size database available to us during the development and testing of our application. This gives us a place to analyze and tune SQL statements and test out the performance of components in our application as they are finished. And most importantly, we can be confident in the results that we get because we have a test database that accurately reflects our production data. We also want to make sure to be incorporating performance testing early in our project lifecycle. This is all about risk management. We want to identify areas of the application that could be at risk for performance issues and get a measure of where we stand early so we can address those risks early in our project if we need to. So don't leave performance tuning and testing until the very end of your project. Try to analyze and test both statements and application components as you work on them. When our project does move into a formal test phase, ideally we would like to conduct a formal performance test and simulate the load our application will be under in order to identify any bottlenecks that we may have and get those addressed. If, however, you're not conducting a formal performance test in this way, then you should look to make sure that any functional testing you perform is against a full-size database. This will at least give you some level of assessment of the performance of your application. Finally, keep in mind that performance tuning and testing your application is really about usability. We all know from our own experiences that applications that respond sluggishly or take a long time to perform critical business functions don't provide a very good user experience. So the real reason we go through all this trouble of performance tuning and testing our applications is to make sure that our applications aren't just functional for our users, 
but they are more usable as well.